Hi everybody, this is Denise from Something Beautiful Handcrafts and for today's Dye Pot Adventures, I'm going to talk about breaking colors. So there are some dye colors that are a mixture of other colors. We have our primary colors and then we have secondary and tertiary colors and we also have shades of those primary colors. And the way they're formulated is you mix them, you know, pretty much like your basic elementary mixing colors, yellow and blue make green. When you put them into the dye pot, there are certain things you could do to get those colors to break up into those separate colors instead of making the color that you intended. Now sometimes this is what you want. A lot of times this is not what you want. If you've ever tried to dye black, you know that a lot of times when you put that black in the dye pot, you get all kind of crazy browns and greens. Uh, and sometimes, instead of getting split colors, you get just the brown, or just a really like ugly green. And that's because the color broke and it did not dye you know, solid black. So in this case, I intentionally break colors. I'm, I'm not like a really big splashy color person and I tend to dye my yarns and rovings shades of one particular color. And I want to say a lot of times what you're seeing with these different colored rovings is they're actually one color that I've caused the color to break or I've caused the color uh, to shade. And let me tell you a little bit about the breaking process. And this is the way I do it. There's also another way to do it. There may be several ways to do it, but this is my preferred method. Okay, this right here is Jacquard Blue. It's um, a periwinkle. There we go. Let's see if you can get a good look at it. And generally, periwinkle comes out pretty close to a light purple. In this case, I like to break it so that you get a bluish gray, a true blue over here, a what looks like a, a lot like sky blue. There's a darker blue. Hopefully that camera is showing you bluish purple. And then there's a really light like lilac across here. There's not as much lilac in this one. Uh, and that's because the temperature was warmer. And what I did was I put the dye into the dye pot with the water cold. If I had put it in colder, uh, then I would have gotten more purple. And then after that, I added the acid and then allowed the pot to heat up. Whenever you apply the dye to the pot with the water very cold, it causes parts, uh, certain colors of that dye to strike. It seems to me that red usually strikes really fast. And I'll show you that with the uh, Cordell that's drying. And it seems that also that blues turn purplish when you use a cold pot. Now you can also break the dye by, if you have a warm pot, adding the dye into the fiber without adding the acid. That'll also cause certain colors to strike first. So if you want to avoid breaking, which a lot of people do, then first of all, heat your water. Don't add the dye before the water is heated at temperature, or at least pretty warm, and mix the acid and the dye together. Shake it up really good and then pour them into the fiber together and then make sure your pot stays hot throughout the process. That'll keep the dyes from breaking. But if you want to break the dyes, then it's, it's really cool to watch the colors that they change into. Now, also, if you have colors like reds and yellows that don't break per se, you can alter their tints. First of all, you can change the shading and tint of the um, colors like red by just adding more or less dye, of course. And so sometimes I'll add in a speckle or two of dye, kind of swish it around as a light color, and then I will add more in certain places to allow the fabric to uptake. Also, the same thing happens with the cold water. 
uh, it will strike with a lighter color. And then as the pot heats, uh, it will strike with the darker color. And so usually I'll let it strike with the, with the colder color. And then I'll kind of raise up a little bit of the fiber that I don't want to get darker. Uh, add the extra dye in for it to strike and then cover the lid to make sure that the parts that's out of the water gets heated nicely. Okay, I'm outside. The lighting is so much better here, uh, but there's all this, this noise going on, so just try to ignore that. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the purple straight into the pot. Uh, this isn't pre-soaked. This is just me putting water inside here uh, just a few moments ago before I carried the pot out. And uh, there's about eight ounces of white cordell in the pot. Uh, I don't have any particular way that I want this to go onto the fiber. Um, no particular plans. It can just go on exactly the way it is. Um, and there's only water in here because it's a lot easier uh, for it to spread this way. And it's cold water, so. Just gonna kind of tap it on. I'm not very scientific at all when I die. Uh, some people measure out solutions. Um, they do all kinds of stuff and that is so really cool. But a lot of times I'm not making something I need to repeat. Um, uh, every once in a while I'm looking for a particular outcome, but most of the time, not really. I'm just kind of putting it in and enjoying what's going to happen. So let me see. Just going to pour it over there. Okay, now what we see right there, let's see, let's zoom in on there. Not only do you see, of course, the color softening, but you can see it breaking right there. There's a, okay, so this purple, but over here, uh, you can see that dot is a, is a true blue. I mean, that's a very nice true blue. And you're also getting some red. So I've got a purple, uh, something that is really lavender-like, something that is lilac-like, um, something that is very much a red, and something that is a true blue. Let me try to get that. Yeah, see, there we go. Down on the bottom, that looks very bluish. Uh, I almost, I hate to put more water in there uh, because I really like how that kind of speckled out. But I'm going to go ahead and add some water because we do need to get some dye along the sides. I don't want to mostly uh, white roving. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this pot into uh, into its um, holder so that I can go ahead and turn it on let it cook. Now, uh, let me say this. Uh, since I do like the speckling, I like how that's going. I don't want to disturb the speckling at all. So what I'm going to do is actually mix the rest of the dye inside uh, the little water container. And I'm going to make it the color I want it to be. So uh, I'll dilute it or leave it at uh, full strength. And then I'm just going to pour it around the edges. That way uh, I can go ahead and hit those edges and give them a little bit of color. Okay, now you can see the whole um, piece of roving. Um, I'm not calling it a braid because this is actually eight ounces. But this right here is will be a braid because it's four ounces. Okay, so but you can see the everything together now. It's just imagine it's a little bit lighter than what the camera is showing. And actually, I'm not really sure uh, what it's going to actually look like on the camera until I get it in and edit it. If it's any you know, different or same, I'll just kind of put a little comment down on the video. 
anyway uh, you can see the difference you can see a little bit of the oh no actually maybe you can't a little bit of that same type of purplish in the periwinkle and a little bit of that same um, pinkish coming from that purple in the periwinkle so that kind of gives you an idea of the periwinkle blue is more than likely mixed with purple a little bit of purple to give it that tint uh, what you don't see is any of the red that pinkish red inside of the, the blue so that's not in there but it's in this purple and you get a really good sense of how it broke up now I, I use the same jacquard colors all the time you know I just kind of have a thing you know your colors you know which ones do what you want them to do not all of the colors break up the same way not all of them break so you, you kind of have to know you know you learn by trying to see which ones are going to do what and things don't always break quite the same way uh, I'm not doing anything scientific I'm not making sure it's always the same temperature or you know always the same amount of acid no not really uh, so I'm not always gonna get quite the same thing every time but they're fairly predictable as to what colors they're gonna break up and not always how much sometimes I get more you know red red sometimes I get more pinky red sometimes I get more true blue it just kind of depends I suppose I could really dive into it and make sure I get the same color each time uh, I kind of dying for me is a little more serendipitous I don't know I just want to use that word so kind of stuck it in there uh, anyway I hope this makes sense it's early in the morning that I'm completing this video and I haven't had any coffee yet which may or may not make any difference uh, so I'm probably more apt to um, go on but hopefully it made some kind of sense and uh, there's some other videos on breaking colors too I think someone said Chemnitz likes to break uh, Wilton colors I've never worked with Wilton the food colors and I imagine they they break in interesting ways too so you can always check that out okay thanks for watching as always if you have any questions go ahead and drop those in the comments and have a great day